Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have the opportunity to work on a reel that's older than me, which is kind of hard to, to figure. This one is going to turn 100 in just a couple of uh, years. This is a Fluger Oceanic. I did a little bit of research on this one. It was sent in by Scott. Scott had this as a flea market find. And the research said it was, it's got two patents on it. One is uh, from 1907 and the other is from 1923. And the reel was pretty much in production in 1925. So we're sitting here just uh, coming up on 2023. Well, not coming up, we're in it. And, uh, well, two more years. This should turn the century if it's in that era or very close to it. This is a direct drive ocean fishing reel. That's probably why it was called Oceanic. I only can guess how old the, the line is on this thing. This one works. It's got a little bit of chirp. Um, I'm not sure. Still has a loud clicker, which is nice. And well, we're going to take this apart. Let's get, <laughs> see what they did 100 years ago and uh, see if that can work. Well, the uh, reel has a kind of unusual uh, cap nut. Cap nut is held in place by a little toggle screw. I'm going to go ahead and grab that, and I should be able to just loosen it and push it out of the way. There you go. Kind of open door. Leave that screw in there if you can. You can always kind of tell the date of a uh, reel in, in broad terms, pre-war, post-war. If you've got a wooden handle on it like this one, uh, pre-war, and then the war came and uh, all of a sudden you got the, the new materials, the plastics and the like. Okay, let's see if we can. We can. Nice. hundred years later and this, the cap nut just turns right off. Or cap, I'm calling it a cap nut I haven't seen underneath. Maybe a screw. No, it's a cap nut. And uh, we can remove that handle. So there you go. This reel does not have a drag. It has large capacity. It probably holds so, three, four hundred yards of line easily. And uh, we're going to see what's underneath. It does have a free spool release. I believe that's a free spool release. We're going to find that out. And uh, we'll see what we can do. All right. There's one. Well, there's several uh, side plate screws. One doesn't look uh, original to the reel. I'm looking on the back side just to see if maybe it got swapped around. But this one, well, maybe that's indented because of the way that the swing lever works. That's probably it. The others sit proud, and that one probably because of the swing lever is it. So take a picture when you do these kinds of things. That way you'll know where to put it back to when it comes time to reinstall the wheel. Well, while I'm doing this, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. If you like the art of reel repair, if you like to learn about some of the older reels, if you uh, enjoy working on and servicing reels, then my channel's got a lot to offer you in the sense that uh, we work on all kinds of reels. I try to have a diverse group, everything from fresh water to salt water and the like. And uh, I like to also try to show you the, uh, the modern as well as the vintage, and all of those can uh, and kind of play into your experience and gaining some knowledge and uh, help you working on the reels when you choose to do that. These are very long. These might get a record for the longest cross post screws that I've had, but that's going to, to help, of course, hold that stuff tight. Wow. I'm often asked, should, should you, could you, would you use the uh, mechanical screwdrivers? I don't recommend it. There's a lot of torque in it. Particularly if you're working on an old reel like this, I don't recommend it in the least because, well, you can strip that screw, break that screw with the torque, and if you do, you're out of lock, right? A lot of times I would clean the reels up. This one's got a beautiful patina on it, and there's no way in the world I am going to put a polish or a cleaner or anything like that. I'm going to leave it just as it is. I think that'll tell the story all by itself in terms of how it's been fished, where it's been stored, and everything in between. And we're just going to leave it that way. And uh, Scott, if you want to clean it up, go ahead, but I don't recommend it. This is a uh, beautiful example. Okay, this is 350, so that answers the question about the yardage. It would hold 350 yards. The, the line of the time was Dacron line or linen line. So that's what the 350 on the stamp on the real seat means. It's a 350 yard capacity, which means it's a very large reel for ocean fin fishing, hence oceanic. Well, two more screws to go. If you're wondering what that little leather P3 
piece is there hanging from that one bar, well that's a thumb drag and that controls the line as you're letting it out. You put pressure on there so that you don't have to rip up your thumb. Rather you just uh, use that leather to take the, the beading there. That's fairly common on the older reels, particularly those without drags. Drags came into being well, a little bit earlier than this reel was made. Generally credited with the drag is Von Hoff, Von Hoff, Edward, I believe, or Joseph, one of the two. And uh, that was the first time they went into a star drag kind of a mode. This one does not have that. They were competitors. All right, let's get that last one out and see if we can get this side plate off. And we can. And isn't that kind of interesting? So this is going to use a free spool that as you lever this, it's going to move the main gear in and out. You'll see it here. You see just enough of a, a turn down that it's going to release. Watch, it's just a gentle movement here. But what it's doing is it's releasing the main gear from what would be the, the spool gear here or the pinion gear. Well, there's not much to servicing these, which is one reason why the thing has stayed around as long as it has. Again, I'm going to leave that patina there. I do want to clean up the older piece, which is the grease that's sitting in those cavities. And look at how sharp the point is on that click mechanism. I don't know what they made this of, steel of some description. I would challenge you to find any ocean reel today that has that sharp point five years after that point fishing for the first time, no less uh, almost a century. Well, that's all you need to do on this side. Clean it up. We're going to put some fishing reel grease in there. That's going to make the back end of the spool spin easier right here. I will uh, use some penetrating oil on this. I probably should put a glove on. But, uh, take our chances here. I'm just going to wipe off what is the old grease on the back end of the spool. We mentioned that this is a, um, a spool gear. I'm going to place that down noting that the, I left the top side up. We'll clean this. Now there was a little bit of chirping going on with this and that chirping could be it from any of a number of things. It could be a spool that's out of square. It could be a frame that's out of square, or it could just be that there's a lot of play in the, in the reel because of lack of grease and the like. We're going to see. I'm checking the teeth on the gear. They're all good. I'm going to use a hard brush, just kind of pull through it. I've got my finger, I still, this probably could go either way, but I've got my finger top side on what is the top of this. If I do drop it, I'll probably be in a little bit more trouble. But I'm going to. This is like that little ball in the shell game. You gotta follow the bouncing ball kind of a thing. Now, that's just gonna simply sit over the post, just like that. I'm going to grab a brush, put a nice amount of grease on that, and then we'll go over and clean up the other side. And uh, wow, I've got a lot of fine stories to tell. You can certainly, in restoring a reel, take the old line off. As I mentioned, I think I'm going to leave that on there for the story. And uh, we'll let Scott uh, determine whether he wants to pick that off or what he wants to do with it. All right, this one should just be a layover stud. And there's two screws here that have a shield. We want to get under there and clean that. So let's see what we can do here about getting these screws out. If they're as good as the other ones were, we shouldn't have any problem. If they're uh, uncooperative, we'll have a decision to make about how far we want to press our luck with the uh, trying to get them out. <clears throat> if you break them, you're out of luck. All right, I'm seeing that the back end is turning here.
So what I have is I have a pair of, of screws I can kind of see they've been uh, cut down and probably peened over. Now that might be a result of banging against the spool but this is not an easy out and that's as I mentioned there's always sometimes we just have to make a decision particularly as it evolves to hold, hold reels. I don't know if you can see that. These have been clipped and peened over where they should thread out so they're not coming out and I'm going to leave them that's the best I can hope for on this reel. I'm going to flood the cavity behind it now and whole piece with penetrating oil. I want to break up any greases that are in there. I want to mop up as much of this as I can. I'm going to use a cotton swab, being careful not to stick the cotton in the... Uh, I don't want it trapped behind. We'll clean up underneath. I suspect that uh, we can get most of this. It's a beautiful plate underneath it. 100 years and still nice and shiny underneath with the metals. Well, that's turning nice and free and easy. All right, I'm checking the teeth, kind of high speed, but I'm checking the teeth here, making sure that they're not damaged. Unfortunately, those screws are damaged. I'm going to put some grease onto the teeth. Now, ideally, I would have had that off, and we could have done it that way, but as I mentioned, sometimes, particularly with vintage reels, you've got a decision to make. And on a hundred year old reel that's still working, uh, that, one, that one was a pretty easy decision. All right, so that's it, right? We have a uh, uh, pre spool release that works easily. We've cleaned up the inside, re greased the teeth, we're getting the dirt out of the channel here. That could be a reason why this thing is chirping. A lot of dirt in there. Uh, it may be that that's forcing the spool to move a little bit. I'm going to check the other channel on this side. I didn't do that, but having seen it on the one side, we might as well do the other side with it. I'm just running a cotton swab through there, and you can see, yeah, we we have a, an accumulation of, I'll call it stuff. How's that, right? Okay, let's go ahead and put the spool back. Mount the. I think we could probably do with a sliding a little bit of oil underneath this bar that's going to be moving in and out. I'm going to set it to the off position, to the outside. That way it should make it easy to clear the assembly. And we need to line up the pieces and just put them back in. The long one that belongs in there, well, I don't know if it's any different, but I did set that aside in my case just to make sure that if it was a different screw that I didn't uh, misplace it, put another one in. There's two shorter screws. You should pay attention to those. Those came from the bottom. And then there's three of the other screws. Well, I'm going to just take a moment here to tell you that if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, if you're uh, kind of curious about how reels are made, their histories, the manufacturing of them, if you want to know age of reels and so on, uh, if you leave that question in the comments section, I will try to get that question answered for you. Um, I know a lot about reels, have had a lot of experience but I can't say I know everything about reels, but if I can answer your question, I'll certainly try to do that for you. I got a question earlier about the drag setup on a Mitchell 300. I just, uh, I don't know the answer. They're telling me that the, the reel that they have does not have a, a fabric washer in it, and they're asking, was that particular to a certain era or version of the Mitchell 300? I'll, I'll go back and do some work, see if I can find that out. It may just be that when they got their reel, it, uh, it was disintegrated or broken off or something. All right, two more to go. And then we'll put the handle back on and 
We'll see what's happening on a hundred year old reel. Almost. One of the things you'll notice is I'm taking pictures. It may not be apparent to you, but it's a video, it's a picture. And uh, I do that on reels like this when I haven't had an opportunity to service a reel, or I can't find a schematic on it, or I just don't know enough about it. Well, you got to be a little bit bold, kind of go in there. So pictures help. They, they give you reference points, they tell you how the mechanisms are operating, they tell you where certain pieces are coming from. As I mentioned, uh, I noticed myself that the you have a recess screw there. It became obvious that it's got to do with that free spool lever. And that free spool lever, what that's going to do, even though you don't have a drag and your handle is capable of moving back and forth and fighting the fish, and you have that leather pad that's going to help you break the, break the, uh, the drag and so on, the free spool is going to allow you to disconnect the main gear and the handle will not turn back during casting. So there's a couple of them out there that are what we'll call knuckle buster reels that uh, have that feature that just kind of slide out of the way. In all honesty, I can't recall the last time I've seen that, but I've certainly seen it before and it probably was on a Fluger reel. I'm curious, it did say that there are two patent dates, 1907 and 1923 for this. And I'm curious what changed in the patent uh, in the, the, the years. All right, let's take the handle then. Again, I'm not going to touch the patina on this handle, but I am going to reinstall it. We have the ability to bring that in. <coughs> Cap. And do as much of this as you can by hand. Well, while I have this, this is a good time to note. It looks like we have an oil port there. Go ahead and put the oil in it. I wasn't able to get that off. I don't know. That, that gear is probably running on a bridge shaft there. So go ahead and put the oil in. That'll help it. Make sure you use the appropriate size screwdriver when you're using this. It looks like at one point in its career, somebody used an undersized screwdriver. You got a little bit of butterflying going on in there. When you have that down, now tight, tighten back up this screw. Push that uh, little hold fast in. Right, well, let's see what we did now. So we're in free spool now, so the spool should turn, but the handle shouldn't. And it is. We have spool adjusters on both sides. You can play with those. Look at this. A hundred years later, and look at the spool spin. Absolutely amazing in terms of performance on these wheels. You can cast this thing today and probably cast it quite some ways. All right, when you push your free spool back in, if I was to do the same thing now, that handle should turn, which it does. And we got a little, still got that little chirp. I think some of that chirp could probably be taken out by just kind of working these side plates to center it. There you go. For the most part, uh, that's that. That's, that's just too nice, Scott. I don't know what you paid for this reel. How you found it, where you found it. I know you found it at a flea market. This is just a gorgeous reel. I had looked at a, um, a book that said if you got one of these in pristine condition about 25 years ago, it was worth about $70 as a collectible. So that's one of the reasons why we have left the patinas and the like on there. Wow. Well, I hope you've all enjoyed that. I hope uh, you learned a little bit of something about this reel. And uh, I hope that you continue your, your uh, education and your knowledge by watching my channel, subscribing to it, and using that notification button to uh, let you know when I post new videos. So to everybody who's our first responder and essential personnel, thank you so much for all it is that you do. To everyone out there, please stay safe, stay well, stay watching. Have a happy new year, and I wish you the best. Great fishing. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a nice day.